have question 7 it says the graph f of x is equal to x plus 4 um x minus 6 is shown below the parabola cuts the x axis at b and the y axis at g c is the turning point of f and line ae has an angle of inclination of theta and cuts the x axis and y axis at a and e respectively t is a point on f between b and g as we can all see that um then 7.1 says write down the coordinates of b and d if we can look at b and d here we can see that b and d are actually x intercepts of this parabola graph of f of x right so that means um we know having to calculate the x coordinate is just the matter of making our f of x zero so we have um the equation is f of x is equals to x plus four x minus six so solving that one will just equate all this to zero so we have x plus four x minus six is equal to zero now we know our x is equal to negative four or our x is equal to six but then looking at this here we can see that our b is in the negative um, x axis and then d is in the positive x axis so that means b is negative 4 is to 0 and d is 6 is to 0 and that's how you have it nice one now 7.2 says calculate the coordinates of c now we can see that c here is um the axis of symmetry as you can see that um remember the x coordinate of the turning point is the axis of symmetry of um the the parabola graph and then again it is the midpoint of the intercept so um to calculate the coordinates of c we can just simply say we do have the coordinates here that's a negative four and then here that's positive six so knowing that this is the axis of symmetry we can just go ahead simply just do like this for 7.2 so for the x coordinate of c let's call it xc when i have negative 4 plus 6 over 2 why am i doing this because i'm saying the x intercept of um, c is actually the midpoint of the x uh, x intercept right so that will give me uh, x of c is equal to positive 1 so if you say negative 4 plus 6 that's positive 2 2 divided by 2 that's 1 right now at this point we want to take this x coordinate and substitute in the original formula of f of x remember we have x um, plus 4 and then x minus 6 now at this point we just want to substitute 1 where this x so this is what we're going to do so this means x is now 1 so where this x i put 1 then that's 1 plus 4 and then that's 1 minus 6. Now, what is 1 plus 4? That's 5. 1 minus 6, that's negative 5. So 5 times negative 5, that's negative 25. Therefore, my coordinates of C are 1 is 2, negative 25. So that's 25. Nice. Now 7.3 says write down the range of f. Write down the range of f. So um, for the range of f, we know that when the graph is like this, when a parabola graph is like that, um, having a mini a minimum point there, according to our notes, which I'm gonna post um the video where I did all the notes on parabola, you can find it on the description. So the range we say this is y is an element of always starting from this uh, y coordinate here which is which will be the minimum value so that's the maximum the minimum value all the way to positive infinity so that's how we have it remember the minimum value here would have to be the y coordinate of this c here the y coordinate of the turning point that's the minimum value of the parabola so we are saying that this parabola will start existing from this point all the way up there remember this arrows are indicating that your graph will continue in that direction all the way up till infinite so to write the range for this one what is our value here that's negative 25 remember we are considering 
the y coordinate because remember range is a set of all possible y values so for 7.3 that means our range is now y is an element of negative 25 included all the way to positive infinity so you can either write it this way or you can even write it in this manner so y greater or equal to negative 25 we are simply saying the graph will start at negative 25 and go all the way up. Um, 7.4 says given that theta is equal to 14.04 degrees and the tangent to f at t is perpendicular to ae. So what are they saying there? Perpendicular to ae. Now what do we know about perpendicular lines? We know that if we have lines that are perpendicular, the product of their gradient will give us negative one. So if we have AE here, multiply it by um by this tan uh, the, this tangent, this should give us negative one because these lines are perpendicular. So the product of the gradient of perpendicular lines is equals to negative one. Now let's calculate that we've been given this theta. So this theta is now provided it's 14.04 degrees. Now we are asked to calculate the gradient AE. Now what are we going to use for that one? Let's use the formula tan theta is equal to m. So this is the formula for the angle of inclination, right? So we are saying tan angle of inclination is equal to the gradient. So remember, what are we given for the theta? That's 14.04 and that's m. So if we punch all this in a calculator, that means our m now, our gradient is equal to 0 0.25. So we are only looking for the gradient of AE. So that's, that's it correct to two decimal places. That's 0 0.25. So now we have 7.2. It says calculate the coordinates of T. But then remember there on the statement in 7.4, it said that the tangent to F at T is perpendicular to AE. So now we know that T is perpendicular to this AE. And remember what, what we said about uh, perpendicular lines is that they have the product of that gradients being equal to negative one. So we have already calculated the gradient of AE. Now let's go. We have the gradient of AE that gave us 0 0.25. But what do we know? If we take the gradient of AE, multiply it by the gradient of the tangent, we should get negative one. So here we have 0 0.5 um, and then the gradient of tan is equal to negative one. So if we can just divide by this 0 0.5 both sides, 0 0.5, that means the gradient of the tangent at T will now be negative four. Now, if we have this, remember what must we calculate? They said we must calculate um, the coordinates of T, right? So for the coordinates of t we can see that we are not given anything we are not given even the equation of the tangent right and then it will be quite impossible for us to calculate the equation of the tangent because we've been told that the tangent only passes at t and then we do not even have the coordinates of t right so that means at this point we are only left with having to consider the fact that if it it is a tangent at this point here that means the average gradient, the average gradient of this para, uh, uh, parabola graph of f of x. So we are saying the gradient of f of x is equal to the gradient of the tangent at that point, right? So this is what we are going to have. So if we are saying the average gradient, f prime x represents the gradient, right? So this is the gradient of the parabola of f of x, right? But then at that point, we know that the gradient, the average gradient of the parabola is equal to the gradient of the tangent, right? So we are applying our calculus here. Then F prime X is equal to M tan, right? At this point, we can say, okay, now we have this will be equal to negative four, right? So meaning that, uh, this is f prime x is equal to negative 4, which is the gradient of tangent. 
but then remember f prime x this indicates that you should derive the formula for f of x so f of x what do we have we have um x plus 4 x minus 6 so if we have to derive this one remember we cannot derive when it's still like this so we have to solve it and make it to be in standard form so that's x squared minus 6x plus 4x then minus 24 if you foil here then we have x squared um, minus 2x minus 24 at this point now we want to calculate f prime x so we have f prime x is equals to when we derive this one remember jump down this is 2x and then here we have we are left with minus 2 but remember we said f prime x is equal to the gradient of the tangent so what are we going to do now we're just going to equate this negative 4 so if we can call this equation 1 and call this equation 2 at this point what are we doing we are equating equation 1 and equation 2 so we have negative 4 is equals to 2x minus 2 now if we solve here we have negative 4 plus 2 which is equals to 2x and then negative 4 plus 2 that gives us negative 2 is equals to 2x then we can divide both sides by 2 then our x is equals to negative 1 but remember we are looking for the coordinates of the turning or of t so that means we've only we only have the x coordinate at this point what do we want to do we want to take this x coordinate and go back to the original formula of the graph because remember at that point that is the point of intersection so we do not have the equation of the tangent but we do have the equation of um the the, the parabola where where it also intersects right so we can just substitute the x coordinate here that means we have f and then um negative one so forgive me for just writing all over the place i hope you can follow that then um we have x this is negative one plus four and then this is negative one minus six so if we solve here we have negative one plus four that's three and then negative one minus six that's negative seven so three times negative seven that gives you negative 21 so that means our coordinate our coordinates for t are negative 1 is 2 negative 21 and that's how you have it wow. so looking at 7.5 it says a straight line g parallel to um a e cuts f at negative 3 is to negative 9 and r calculate the x coordinate of r so now if they say this line um the straight line cuts f at at k and r that means that um those are the point of intersections k and r are the point of intersections and then we know at the point of intersection what are we supposed to do we are supposed to equate the equations of the two uh, of, of, of the two um graphs right so we do have the equation of graph f of x but we do not have the equation of graph g so the point here i'm trying to make is that every time you have to think systematically about this right so at this point we want to calculate the graph of g so that we can uh, so that we can equate it to the graph of f of x now how are we going to go about that one so remember we are given that the straight line g is parallel right to a e now what do we know about parallel lines we know that if lines are parallel they share the same gradient right so let's go about that one we have gradient of a e will now be equal to gradient of um k r the reason for that is because a e is parallel to k r so lines that have lines that are parallel have the same gradient that means gradient of kr is now 0 0.25 but then remember we do have the coordinates of k it's negative 3 and negative 9 so we know the formula that that is gonna work here if we have one set of coordinate and a gradient is this one to calculate the 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 equation of the straight line so for the equation of the straight line we're gonna use this coordinates now and this gradient so we have y plus 9 
is equals to the gradient is 0 0.25 and then this is x plus 3. Now at this point let's let's solve we have y is equals to 0 0.25 times x let's write it um, in terms of fraction we have 1 over 4x and then 0 0.25 times 3 that will give us 3 over 4 then if we transpose this 9 to this side we have minus 9 then this is y is equals to 1 over 4x and then um, if we do that it's minus 33 over 4 so now we do have the equation of the straight line g at this point we are looking for the coordinates of r which is a point of intersection so what are we going to do now we say f of x is now equals to g of x why because at the point of intersection the two graphs are, the two graphs are equal right so we can equate the two graphs remember the point this point at the point of intersection so if we have um let's say a point here and then another straight line here crossing so at this point we are saying the x coordinate and the y coordinates are the same this is a point of intersection hence we equate the graphs okay let's let's move along so f of x remember we calculated it in the previous question and then we got x squared minus 2x minus uh, minus 24. now we do have the graph of g of x that's 1 over 4 x minus 33 over 4. So at this point we want to calculate so we can take all this bring it over to the right hand side to the left hand side i mean then 2x minus 1 over 4x then minus 24 plus 33 over 4. so that's 33 over 4 is equal to 0. now let's solve this so we have x squared if you say negative 2x minus 1 over 4x that should give you negative 9 over 4x right then negative 24 plus 33 over 4 that should give you negative 63 over 4 then equal to x now at this point we can see that we have this denominator 4 which is making this a fraction so um, in order to deal with numbers that are not fractions we can just um do that multiply by 4 so that we cancel out this 4 in the denominator so we have 4 we are left with remember this 4 now will multiply everything inside here so we have 4x squared minus 9x minus 63 and then what you do on the left you also have to do on the right so 0 multiply by 4 which is still 0 so at this point we have this so it's just a matter of having to factorize this so uh, coming out with the factors for this one we have 4x minus 21 remember if you cannot factorize you can always use your quadratic formula then x plus 3 is equal to 0 at this point our x is equal to 21 over 4 or x is equal to negative 3 right but then remember the negative 3 is already um the the, the the form it's already the x coordinate for k meant to say so x is equal to negative 3 is already an x coordinate for k that means for r it has to be this one 21 over 4 that means um therefore in conclusion the x coordinate of r is equal to 21 over 4.